Okay. Is someone else out there? Yes. Oh, they're all out there. We just want them to come in. That's all. Uh, 13 today. Yeah, he'll, he'll come in. He'll come in. He'll find his way. The Holy Ghost will draw him. Yeah. Yeah. Come on in. This is the Lord's house. Yeah. This is the Lord's house. Everyone is welcome. 13 today. We're in September. Hey. And uh, Paradise Now Church meet, Sunday meet, and we're just going to, um, yeah, we're going to rejoice. Come on in there, brother. Yes. And uh, we're rejoicing in the Lord today. Take a seat somewhere there, brother, where, where you feel led. Brother um, uh, Sonny. Sonny, thank you for arriving here today. Sonny. Yeah, and we met Brother Sonny uh, in the square. Brother Isara prayed with Brother Sonny. And didn't we get some conflict from that? I had this bloke on email for about four hours. And he was, of course, uh, from a cult called the Red Horse People. They're the revival centres of Australia. If you don't speak with tongues, uh, you're not saved, apparently. But I had to tell him the, the, the good news of glad tidings of goodly things. And that was that uh, tongues are a gift. No gift can save you. That's why the preacher, if he's not living it out, he'll be damned too. Because preaching is a gift. God gave gifts. Jesus, he who ascended and descended gave gifts to men, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher and evangelist. Amen? Amen. And so the preacher has to live up to the light that he has. Otherwise he won't be saved. And we forget that. Sometimes we get carried away and we can just sort of Jew up, you know, and end up like the Jews. Oh, nothing can happen to us. We're the people of God. I can do what I like. No, you can't do what you like. You know, you can't. You just can't do that. And Brother Sonny had a glory-bound day down there at the square. It was a real blessing to meet Brother Sonny. And uh, he's of Hawaiian. His dad is Hawaiian and his mum's Danish. That's a nice mix, isn't it? And, uh, but now he's a saint. Isn't that? oh, that's wonderful. What? A saint? Yes, I know. It's hard to believe that I'm a saint too. And then we've got Sister Robin here today. Let's give them both a hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, she marae. And Sister Robin, just come bob, bob, bobbing along. And now we're rejoicing here in the meet. What's going on around us today? We see everything crumbling. I mean, this is a large, I mean, huge shipping company called Maersh, M-A-E-R-S-H. And they're sacking a third, a third. I mean, there's millions of billions of dollars in shipping and they're sacking a third of their staff. I mean, we're, we're, we're coming towards the great tribulation. We're coming towards uh, Jacob's sorrows. We're, we're entering in to the last day uh, fallout and the churches are feeling it too. Many are failing to assemble together, you know, in these last days. So we've got to be in the Word, we've got to be switched on, and not just in the Word, but walking in the Word. And everyone said Amen. Amen. A relative of Osama bin Laden uh, endorsed uh, Trump's re-election. And uh, this woman said, if um, Donald Trump doesn't get elected again, there's going to be a... a what would they call it, a, um, a 9-11, second dousing. There's going to be an, another 9-11 if Donald Trump doesn't get back in. I mean, now that, I, I reckon that's fake news myself. But uh, Donald Trump would do anything to get back in. And he would pay anyone any amount of money to say anything to get him back in. My view is America, uh, like all nations are heading to the junk yard as of this very day we can just uh, turn over to psalm 2 for a minute in our bible if you don't have a bible 
Brother Shadrach, you might be able to sort that for... Yeah, Sonny's organised there. Yeah, uh, the guy that was emailing me and emailing me, oh, is he born again, you know? Did he repent, you know? Did he, uh, did he get water baptised and did this happen? I mean, come on, really? he done what i done 33 years ago. He asked Jesus to forgive him of his sins and cleanse him. That's what the Bible says. You confess Christ. You confess Christ is right and you're wrong. You confess you were a sinner and ask Jesus to forgive you. Like the man on the cross confessed he was a sinner. He said, we deserve this. This is our lot. But not you, Jesus. He said, you're going to be with me today in Paradise Now Church. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> and here he is, Brother Sonny. He's following up. He's got a, a, a word of honour. That's something he's got. It's hard to find people today with a word of honour. Oh yeah, I'll see you there. Oh yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. No, no word of honour. I don't trust people with no word of honour. If you say to me, I mean, you don't have to do what I say, but if you say to me you're going to do something you don't do it, I don't bother. I just look straight away and I say, look, that person's got no word of honour. And then if you don't do it, you've got to get in touch with that person and say, look, I can't do this. I said I was going to do this, but I can't because of this, that and the other. And make sure you're not lying. Because you're only doing it to yourself. You're only knocking yourself down. You're only blackening yourself. You're lying to yourself. You're not lying to anyone else at the end of the day. We're in Psalm 2. And we see there, don't we? We see there. that Psalm 2 covers so much ground. Um, as I said, the nations, they're all, they're all going to the junkyard. Psalm 2, 1. Why do the nations, nations, not one, not just the America, not the United States, nations, why do they rage? And the people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. Against the Lord. And against his anointed. That's you. That's you. His anointed. The people of God, the born again, blood washed, spirit filled, spirit led, Jesus loving people. I don't care if you're black, white, tall, fat, skinny, unemployed, or you're filthy rich or whatever. You're of the anointed and his anointed. That's who the nations rage against. Verse 3, Psalm 2. Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. That have nothing to do with you. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Hold them. Hold them down. That, that's sort of like, I can't breathe. That's holding in derision with Jesus' knee on your head. Someone say amen. amen. You don't have to. You can say oh my or why. You might say I can't breathe. I'll say I can because I've got the breath of life in me, Christ. Amen. He breathed into my lungs. Ghost power. Hey? Paraclete power. Jesus. Woo! Verse 4 He who sits in the heaven shall laugh The Lord shall hold them in derision Then he shall speak to them in his anger As he's got his knee on your head If you're one of them He'll speak to you very angrily And distress them in his deep displeasure And you'll be stressed out Can someone say Amen because you've ignored him and you go against him and go against his way. Verse 6, yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. See, this is Father and Jesus happening here. This is Father and Jesus. I have set my king. We're doing Father and Messiah in this one verse. Verse 7. I will declare the decree the Lord has sent to me. Said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. See we've got Messiah, Father happening. 
Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. And the ends of the earth for your possession. You see that? We, we see... We see Father giving Jesus the nations for his inheritance when we go down the back of the book to Revelation. And he says that he will take them out of every nation, tribe, tongue. Some will be Hawaiian, some will be Samoan, some will be Mexican, some will be Filipino, some will be Irish, they will, and some will be Pommy, even though they are whinges. <laughs> and, and some will be... Uh, Deutsch, some will be Danish. I'll take him out of every nation and bring him to himself. Hallelujah. Ask of me and I'll give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Talking to, talking to the the, uh, the upper class now. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son. Embrace Christ. Obey Christ. Love Christ. Kiss the Son. Lest He be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are those who put their trust in him. And we're blessed here today. We're a blessed people here today. Blessed means heavenly happy. Not happy. The world can do happy. But we do heavenly happy. Amen. Amen. We do heavenly happy. We've always got the upper hand, even when it comes to enemies. That's why Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Because he's going to deal with, I'd rather the Lord deal with my enemies than me, because I would only do something physical that would only last probably for a few minutes, but the Lord knows how to deal with humanity. Just have a look at coronavirus. you telling me the Lord can't stop that? He's allowing it to deal with humanity, to isolate them and say, can you hear me? Hoy oh, down there. I want to talk to you in the quiet. But they're not. They're still trying to do their own thing, even though they're isolated. They're making funny things on, on video. And, yeah, and it's still to no avail. The year's nearly done and no one's saying, come on. But we have the Lord, he, he, you know, he, he knows how to get you aside. He knows how to, to move you further and further towards that narrow gate. He says, no, 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 this way, this way. Like sort of a stubborn mule, you know. Then he gets you in that narrow gate and that narrow road so he can bless you with the greatest blessing of all. Not salvation. Him. 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 He's your greatest blessing. You'll never have a friend like Jesus. I never had a friend like Jesus. No, I never had a friend like him. He's faithful and he's true. And he's always there. I've never had a friend like him. You never have a friend like Jesus. Not even your wife. She, the, your wife can't be with you 25-8. But Jesus can. Right? Your husband can't be with you 25-8. But Jesus can. Right? He said, lo, I am with thee always. So we don't have to fear. We don't have to be dismayed. We can rejoice in the Lord always. Don't rejoice in something that can be taken away from you. That would be foolish. That would not be wise. We need to rejoice in that which cannot be taken away. Put him as priority and preeminent, number one. 
Jesus. You can have the other. You can have a wife or a husband or you can have a nice car or a nice house or whatever, as long as you don't thieve and cheat and rob and steal bricks to build the house. There's plenty of houses around with stolen bricks. They might only have 50, 100, but they stole them. I'd have to demolish the place. I'd have to find some way to take that wall down. You know, the, the bricks are stolen. You know, oh no, that'd just put just a bad vibe on the whole thing, wouldn't it? Because we're not of that. We want to do things decently and orderly. Any other way, it's just of the devil. Decently and orderly. That's how you talk to people. Decently and orderly. You know, one thing I noticed when, when I met Brother Sonny on Friday, I said to my wife, he's got a nice way about him, this young man, hasn't he? He's, got a, he's really respectful. Hey? Huh? Decently and orderly. God can do something with this fellow. God can use that young man. Hey? Huh? So, what's going on around us? The US, United States, they just not only have the highest rating of coronavirus, and we know the coronavirus rides the horse called Pale, Pale Horse. We see that in the book of Revelation. Mayhem and death. And um, the US... They now have six million, six million cases and nine, uh, I should say, 190,000 deaths. And now the wildfires are coming in, smashing the West Coast uh, with 50 degree heat into the bargain. See, Father's not happy in heaven. You know what I mean? We don't want to upset Father. <laughs> we see what happened in the days of Noah. When Father got upset, he, he wiped them all out except for eight. That was the driver included of the boat, Noah. Eight. And we see what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah, the two homosexual cities. Beautiful cities at that time. Apparently the most beautiful. And the Lord just wiped them off the map. He, he turned it down to ash. There would have been children in there and women and men and pregnant women. They would have went with them. But he savoured and kept Lot and his wife and the two daughters. And they walked out of Sodom and Gomorrah but the wife looked back because that's where her heart was, she looked back. God knows where you're looking and I'm looking. God knows where your heart is. I've always said this uh, for 33 years ministry. We all know the new covenant. We made A covenant is an agreement to love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, strength and mind first. Command, great command. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. And we can't do that without being born again and, and receiving the Holy Spirit because he's our power. That's the power operating in us. So if Jesus is not number one, how can we be saved? We've broken the covenant. And so here's the wildfires Ravaging the United States on top of it, and um, all uh, elsewhere in the world, there's floods and there, there's hatred on the streets and violence. Even recently, uh, even yesterday, I think it was Sydney and Brisbane too, maybe that um, we have all these uh, protesters on the street 
Black lives matter. No more than white lives. No more than yellow lives. But Jesus matters most, and everyone said. If you are not, you know, if you're a racist, you're going to see colour. If you're a racist. But if you're not a racist, you don't see colour. I grew up with black fellows. As a child, I didn't see no colour until someone told me they're black. I said, oh, really? <laughs> I didn't see that. You see? I grew up with Thursday Island, South Sea Island, Aboriginal, Solomon. I didn't see no colour. We just hung out together and punched on together, played fully together, drank together. we done everything. So you got these BLM on the street. Black Lives Matter. They're full of hatred. They're full of unforgiveness. They're full of rebellion. And then I just seen one clip yesterday in yesterday's news on the telly where they're yelling at the police saying, get a real job, you F and this and F and that, and they're pushing the police. They're telling the police to get a real job. 90% of them are on the dole and junkies and drunks. <laughs> you know what I mean? You couldn't trust them with 10 cents. They'd sell their grandmother for a fiver, I reckon. <laughs> and then they I'll get a real job. You know, looking like something that come out of the abbas. Oh, I wish I had a megaphone. I might go down to one of these rallies and say, <laughs> repent <laughs> or burn you know they don't understand Romans 13 1 to 7 they're, they're blind they're, their priority is their, their race they need to forget the race and get into the race of faith Amen. and start running with Jesus forget the colour bit Jesus ain't going to judge that he's going to judge your heart and everyone said Amen Let's go to John 5.30. We'll go to the message in a minute. We'll just get these hors d'oeuvres out of the way. John 5. Can we go there, please? We're going to read one verse. The verse is 30. John 5.30. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will but the will of the Father who sent me. You see that? The Father who sent me. I do not do my own will, but I do the will of my Father who sent me. I want to point out again, oneness. Oneness heresy. Modelism, it's called. They say Jesus is Jesus, Jesus is Father, and Jesus is Holy Ghost. Rubbish. Jesus is Jesus, Father is Father, and Holy Ghost is Holy Ghost. One God, three persons. Here's Jesus speaking, red riding, not little red riding hood. And, come on, it's clear. I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. So he was sent. By, by himself. No, he was sent by Father. And what does it say in verse 30? Right in the beginning. I can of myself do nothing. Oh, really? Oh, that's nice to know. Hey? I can of myself do nothing. What do you reckon about that? I thought that... Jesus could do all things. He needs Father. Can you say amen? amen? To direct him here. What's it say then? As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father. And everyone said amen. Amen. Hey? 
So here we are. Wildfires. I just thought I'd throw that in. Wildfires, floods, uh, hatred, violence. Last days. These are last days. This is not the beginning of the church. This is the days of the falling away. Where there will be a remnant, a remnant. There will be a scrapping of people that go on with the Lord fully. And go with the Lord. Amen. So people are going to have to be dreaming of a COVID Christmas. I'm dreaming of a COVID Christmas. Just like the one we had in jail. With people whinging. And protests peaking, and law enforcement trodden down. So there's your Christmas. We don't preach Christmas here. It's garbage. It's not in the Bible. If you can, I'll, I'll go back out this Christmas on the street, and I'll have me two fifties or a hundred dollar bill, and I'll wave it round and say, "Can anyone show me Christmas in the Bible? If you can have the paper." You can have the bill. I ne- I've still got it. I think it's still at home there somewhere. <laughs> Santy hundred. <laughs> they can't show me Christmas and they can't show me Easter. But I can show you Jesus' birth and I can show you Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection in the scriptures. And everyone said, Amen. of course, of course, of course. And then, of course, you've got the people that say, oh, you know, it's not us and them. It's not us and them, you know. Let's go to Luke 9. Let's see if it's us and them. Or they're just religious hypocrites. Luke chapter 9. Can we go there, please? I'm dreaming of a COVID Christmas just like the one we had in jail. People whinging. Yes. And protests peaking. We're going to Luke 9. I'm going to read two verses. 45. I should say 49. Luke 9, 49. <laughs> then John answered and said, Master, we, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we forbade him because he does not follow us. Verse 50 is the kicker. But Jesus said to him, Do not forbid him for he who is not against us is for us. You see that? So there's those that are against you and there's those that are for you. So there is us and them. (laughs) There is us and them. It's not just one big hayride into the park. You're going to come across that. You're going to come across people that will be against you. We read that in Psalm 2 this morning, didn't we? Read that in Psalm 2. I'll finish up the hors d'oeuvres now by saying this. I was speaking to a woman during the week. She's the mum of uh, the rugby league uh, professional. Um, Her son's a rugby league professional. Um, What's his name, brother? David. David Fafita. I was talking to his mum. And uh, brother Isara was sitting nearby and I felt so sad for his mum that she said she goes to Shiloh Church Assembly of God Church down in Goodna there and what she's been doing because of COVID she goes down to the church and gets the emblems and they've blessed the emblems and then she takes them home and has them with her mother I said that's basically Roman Catholic dear I said, that's got nothing to do with the Bible. Because I said, you and your mother are born again, water baptised. I said, you can get a bit of cordial out of the cupboard and 
a Jets cracker or something and break it and partake of the communion because where two or more are gathered in Jesus' name, he is in the midst. There's no scripture, no such thing as blessing the emblems in a special manner. It's Roman Catholic. It's like they say, oh, a member of the church can't baptise anyone in water. You have to go to the minister. That's hogwash too. You can baptise anyone you want into the death, burial and resurrection of the Christ in Jesus' name or in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. I I believe you can even just baptise in the name of Yahweh because Yahweh is God and Jesus is God and Father is God and Holy Ghost is God. I believe when I say Yahweh, I'm covering the whole three. I don't use the word Jehovah because Jehovah is high bread. It's not the original name of God. The original name of God is Yah, Y-A-H. Y-A-H. Remember that. So um, just those little things we need to um, adjust as we go along. So let's go into the message today. We're doing a series where this is our 40th part. 40th part. Started off with one message, then broke into 40 parts so far. That's when they're pushing towards a year on this thing of Sundays. Hey? Matthew 28. Everyone knows Matthew 28, the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee. To the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And I'm sure Brother Sonny is willing and ready to be water baptised. Fully submerged. There's no problem there. When we love the Lord, when I came to the Lord, I asked him to forgive me of my sins that come into my heart. But yet they say, oh, that's rubbish. You're not even saved if you say that. Well, how come I'm saved? How come I know Jesus? How come I have the Holy Ghost? How come I speak with other tongues? How come these are all gifts? How come I preach like a machine? How how come, you know, I write and teach? You can't do that without the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you now. And and it'd be meaningful and relevant and non-contradictory. So we've been dealing with um, teaching. Uh, We've been dealing with uh, verse 20, Matthew 28, 20. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. You see, when you come to the Lord straight away, I came to the Lord and I went out and I started teaching people to observe. What? I don't even, didn't even know the Bible. Didn't even have the scripture. No, I went out and as soon as I found someone, I said, oh man, can I tell you what happened to me the other day? Two days ago, I, I said this prayer and it was just unbelievable. I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. And you know what happened? I had this, my, I couldn't hold my tongue. I was speaking in other tongues and this power was all over me. I was teaching them what he has given to me and taught me. He taught me so far, it's glorious. It's heaven. I'm in heaven. And the only explanation I can find is the word that I am speaking to you today. In heaven. Paradise. 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 Paradise now. Church, now, I'm not waiting around for the Sabbath day, now, 
25a, paradise. As Jesus said to the thief on the cross, because you admit you're, you're a filthy sinner and you're not like me, who is pure and perfect and God manifested in the flesh, you will be with me today in paradise. Hey? Paradise. You will, today I say to you, you will be with me. People say, oh, but paradise, where exactly is it? Oh, come on. If you're with Jesus, it is paradise. Hey? If Jesus is with you and you're with Jesus, it doesn't matter. The things of the world become strangely dim in the light, in the doctrine of Christ and the glory of the ghost, the glory of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Like Brother Blade, the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. Sister Elaine, the Spirit of the Lord was upon her. On Friday as she was in Ipswich trying to help the lost. And this man, he said, oh, I love the Pope. I love Francis. Francis the talking mule. I like donkeys too, you know. But the thing is, Sister Elaine just kept coming back. Bang, 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 bang. He ended up on the ropes, you know, and then she just finished him off with a Holy Ghost uppercut and he bolted. He, he couldn't take any more because everything he said was put to dust. And there's Brother Blade on the other corner. He, he, he just proclaiming the letters, you know. He just going forward there, bold as a lion and the righteous are as bold as lions. Amen? And not, oh, but bold as lions. Glory to the Lamb. That's the boldness, power of the Holy Ghost. As Paul went bound to Jerusalem, he was glory bound. He, was, he said, I go bound to Jerusalem. I know what's waiting for me, chains and tribulation. But he went bound boldly in the Holy Ghost. And that's, why the Lord gave us the Holy Ghost so we can be bold and we can go forward. Hallelujah. So today's message is teach for because we're deconstructing the word teach. We've done the T and um, let's go tell it on the mountain. We've got to go tell it on the mountain, the T and teach. Teach because we've come down to that in the fear of the Lord series, we're in the, we've already deconstructed the fear of the. We're in, we're in the, T-H-E-L-O-R-D, the fear of the Lord. We're in the T and we went forward with the T as teach in the fear of the, the Lord. Knowing that faith takes. There's just so much there. So, and then we done the, uh, the E was encourage. Teach, T-E-A. When you're teaching someone, you tell them to go. And what you received here, go and share it with someone else and bless them. Then, we encourage. When, when we teach others, we encourage and get beside them and say, hey. And they say, well, I've done this wrong and I've done that wrong. And, you say, look, what does the scripture say? You can repent, but don't go back. Truly repent this time and go forward and don't go back. So we, we encourage and then we assure, A-T-E-A-C-H, we assure them. We go forward and assure people that there is a judgment day. There is a judge and the judge ain't gay. The judge is holy and he's righteous. There, there, there is a hell. There is, we assure the people every day. I've been assuring people. Most assuredly I say to you, there's a hell. There's a heaven. There's a judgment day. There's a judge. There, there's light. There's darkness. There's true. There's false. There, there's um, compromise. There's lukewarmness. 
And none of this will help you if you neglect so great a salvation. Hebrews 2, chapter 2, verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect the call? Such a great call. Hebrews 2, 3. If we neglect, look at it in your Bible. Hebrews 2, 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Walking with the Lord is the, the ultimate in life and living and priorities. It's the ultimate. It's the ultimate. So many people today have come to take churches as social clubs, handout societies, just passing the day, you know, uh, my... Girlfriend goes there, so I go there, you know, I just suck it up and put up with it. Because, you know, uh, her parents don't like it if I don't go there. Not saved. <laughs> not saved. They're not in love with Jesus. <laughs> oh, I go there because my boyfriend goes there, you know. Like, howdy, partner. Howdy, partner. yee My partner goes there. yee Sorry, not saved. <clears throat> so here we are. We're doing a bit of teaching here today, you know. Very unorthodox. Very non-demonised denominational. But very 1 Peter 4, 11-ish. If you're going to speak, you speak as the oracles of God. And if you're going to minister, you minister with the ability He has given you. And everyone said, Amen. 1 Peter 4, 11. Come on now. So we're in teach 4, which is the C. Correct them. C. T-E-A-C. Teach. Correct. We have to correct. If you love your brother and your sister, correct. Correct. You know, you, you see young ones learning to drive cars. Young one, oh, young one. They're learning to drive a car. And there's someone on the passenger side with a packet of Valium. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Just to help them along there, two boxes of Valium on the dash, and there's a other. <laughs> it's left at the next corner. <laughs> They're sort of sitting there, angry birding, you know. <laughs> and there's a, a driver, and she's Asian. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, she's not Asian. She's African. <laughs> no, no, she's not. She's not. Uh, and he's going, he's correcting her. No, no, that's the wall. I said, don't turn right into the wall. I said, at the roundabout. <laughs> and he's correcting, correcting. You see, because... There's a learner and there's a teacher. <laughs> and I tell you what, it can be like that, even when you're teaching the Word of God, you know. <laughs> and that's the way it goes. So we've got to correct, correct them. And sometimes they grab the wheel and pull it back, you know, because they're going over a cliff or something minor like that. <laughs> and so let's turn in our Bibles to... Acts 17, please. We just go there. Acts 17. Young ones, oh, young one. Acts 17 and the verse is 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and corrected them. I mean, and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very... 
religions. Very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. You see, now Paul started there, uh, we're in Acts, we're in Acts 17 and verse 22. I'm sure that everyone's there. Yes. Paul started there and then in Acts 17, 22 and 23. That's where he started. To correct them and redirect them. They had a lot of objects. You know, people have a lot of objects. Roman Catholics, Orthodox Jews, Orthodox, Greek, Greek Orthodox. Um, you even might find them in uh, evangelical churches, objects. And Anglican church, there's statues and objects of worship. And he also he, he, he found an altar with these words written on it to the unknown God. At least they were honest. So Paul, I believe, thought I can do some I can do something here. God can use me to do something here. Because they know they're honest. We don't know this God. We're just worshipping an unknown God. You know, when I was a little boy, I used to go to the Roman Catholic Cathedral and I'd supposed to be worshipped there. You know, I'd go there and I didn't know God. But I'd go through the motions. And, and, and I believed. You know, a lot of people believe. You know, when we met Brother Sonny the other day and Brother Isaiah told me about Brother Sonny, I said, there, yeah, he was a believer. But now he's a receiver. <laughs> That's a lot of difference. He was a believer. Oh, yeah. But now he's a receiver. Now he's locked in. Now he has the Spirit of God. Because he asked the Lord to forgive him. He, he asked Jesus. And he was given. He, he was found. You know, by him. What's the scripture say? They were found, uh, he was found by them who weren't looking for him. Yeah. And this, it just happened. This is the way it is. It, same with me. I was uh, drunk. It, it was about six o'clock in the morning and when the Aboriginal knocked on my door. Tell me about Jesus. And I was just about to have a joint. I was listening to a bit of Mick Jagger. Uh, I think it was Voodoo Lounge or something like that. And offered the Aboriginal a joint. He said, ah, no, brother. Uh, not into that, eh? And he told me about the Lord. But I didn't ring him up and tell him to come there. I was found. You know? I was lost. But he found me. He tracked me down. And Jesus is far greater black tracker than anyone. He's far greater. He's the greatest GPS ever. <laughs> he can track you down. He knows where you are. Eh? And uh, he gave me the message. But I didn't come to the Lord. It was a week later, I was just shaking all over. You know, I was doing a normie row. Shaking all over. I had the fear of God all over me. And I went to Him. And that's when we prayed and I received the Lord. So here's Paul opening up. He's correcting. You know, Paul did what he did because he feared the Lord. Let's not lose track of our 
initial title, the fear of the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is to hate all evil. The fear of the Lord. And we did say initially, 40 messages ago, to fear God is to love Him intensely. To fear God is to um, uh, obey God. To fear God is to respect Him. Brother Sonny knows plenty of people that don't respect God and that take Him for granted. Hey? I like that. I like that, Brother Sonny. Uh, we had a chat as we had something to eat on Friday in the city. And, and he's saying, you know, there's so many people that are so ungrateful and, and they don't respect God. And... But here he is. He's, he, he's first meeting with us and we're doing the fear of the Lord, the respect of the Lord, the love of the Lord to obey the Lord series. And everyone said, it, it's divine. It's not some religious hocus pocus. Acts 17, 24. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. God doesn't live in this building. He lives in you. He doesn't live in a building. He lives in you. He lives in me. He, he lives in those who receive him. They believe. They receive. They they obey, they continue, they rejoice in Him. Amen. Here we are. Only a remnant. We are. In a big world where there's millions of religions, millions of gods. Hey? In India, they put red paint on the cow's horns or something and dress it all up. You know, in the islands, whether it's the Polynesian or Hawaii or Philippines, they've got their gods there. They've got their tikis and you know, all these sorts of things. And they oh, you know, and they think, oh, because it looks so scary, he's going to protect me. Really? <laughs> like, hello? <laughs> no. It's scary, he won't protect you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to protect you, scary. Acts 17 25 says, Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life and breath and all things. See, he, he's the one. And they're down there saying, To me, for 33 years on the streets of the world, I'll oh, get a real job, mate. You know, I said, listen, follow, you won't be getting out of bed to do anything tomorrow without Jesus. Because he gives you breath. You know, without breath, you're, you're not going to be the number one NBA player or number one rugby league player. You ain't got no breath. You're not going to be Mr. Charity signing checks. <laughs> you won't be able to pick the pen up. You'll be dead. <laughs> and dead men can do nothing. Amen? 26. Uh, he's teaching. See, he's correcting. All these verses, one by one, this is what they were doing. And, and he's correcting each one. Everything. See, this is what the Holy Ghost was giving Paul word of knowledge here. And he's going, oh, you start at verse 24 and the Holy Ghost is showing Paul. They think God lives in a temple. That's verse 24. Verse 25. They think that God needs them or needs something. That's verse 25. Verse 26. Oh, here they are thinking that uh, in verse 26, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their habitation. Here they are thinking that um, you know, they're in charge and they're controlling everything. No, he, he's predetermined your boundaries. 
You can go thus far and no more. I'm going to be this, I'm going to do that. No, 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 no. If God wills you live tomorrow and he's already predetermined your boundary and even of your habitation, where you live. So he's, he's correcting the mindset of these people. And verse 27, so that they should seek the Lord in hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from... He's not far. God is omnipresent. Everywhere you go. You see, you can't say, oh, the devil got me. Powers, powers of darkness got me at the wrong time. Where were you, Jesus? He's omnipresent. <laughs> he was on the job. Jesus! Jesus! He was on the job. But you weren't on the job, were you? You didn't call out to Jesus. You see? See how he's correcting their mindset so that they seek the Lord. He's put the borders and the fences around of your habitation and and existence and that. He's boxed everything up so he wants us to call out to him. Paul is saying to them, he's been predetermined that. Verse 27, Acts 17. And so that they would, should seek him and grow for him and find him. It's all about, no matter what the Lord does, he, he, he does it so that you would seek him. Something really bad goes down. He wants you to seek him. Something really good happens. He wants you to seek him. He wants you to go to him and say, on your knees and thank you, Lord. I really, really needed that 50 bucks. Thank you. I do it daily. (laughs) I don't work nine to five. I have to stay on my knees. I thank you, Lord. I I thank you for Brother Isaiah paying for that meal, I tell you. I I thank you, Lord. I will do likewise to another who has no money to buy a meal. I thank you, Lord, for that offering. Oh, Lord. Without that, I'd have to turn religious. I'd have to start asking for tithes and 10% of people's hard-earned cash when you didn't even ask for anyone's money, nor did Peter, Paul, Matthew, Martin, Luke or John or Mary. And everyone said. He's always... Wanting us to come to him. He's a jealous God. He's not going to play second fiddle to your wife, children, or your mother, or your friends, or your motorcycles, cars, or drugs, or self, or sin. Everyone said. Glory to the Lamb. Verse 28. For, uh, we're in Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said for we are also his offspring some of the their own prophets prophets poets prophets are very poetic not all poets are prophets but all prophets are poets you see how prophets write very poetic very rhythmic In him we live and move and have our being. Surely they were thinking in themselves that they live because of them. Go to the world. Ask the people of the world. I've seen it for decades. I've talked to many, 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 many people on the streets. Many. In 33 years. And many of them said, oh, look, mate, don't tell me about that. I I worked hard to get that car and house. And I worked that with my own hands. You see, they're no better than these uh, religious people at the Arapagus on Mars Hill. No better. They thought they were doing it. But in him, we have breath. It's him that gives us breath. It's him that allows us to do great things, saved and unsaved. 
Hopefully, uh, we all remember the story of the King Nebuchadnezzar. And God was looking at the man's heart to become proud because he was such, had such greatness. And, and then the Lord said, I'm going to humble you. You're going to become like a cow. You're going to grow hair and you're going to eat grass until you, you come back to me and then I'll make you, I'll take the, the curse off you. And he did. So we need to be mindful of God in our lives and in everything, every blessing and, and, and every chastening, every correction. Be mindful of the Lord, that the Lord corrects and chastens those whom he loves. As Paul the Apostle said, if he, God doesn't correct us, we're just bastards. We're just no better than a bastard. You know? We have no father. Without his correction. We've got to accept that. Because God doesn't correct us because he, he likes to correct. He corrects us so that we can partake of his holiness. That's in Hebrews. Can we go there please? In Hebrews. He chastened. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Verse 9. Furthermore, we have human fathers who correct us and we pay them respect. Should we not much more be ready to subject ourselves to the Father of lights? Or the father of spirits and, and live. For they indeed for a, for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them. But God, but he for our profit that we may partake of his holiness. Hebrews 12 verse 11. Now, no correction, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields a harvest. It yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who've been trained by it and allowed God to do the work in us. Everyone said Amen. amen. So here's Paul at the Areopagus. He's at Mars Hill correcting them and, and trying to put things straight. We're in verse 28. Verse 29. Acts 17. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. No, 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 no. The divine nature is far above gold, silver, money, beautiful architecture and cathedrals and anything man can do or anything the hands of man can do. God's nature, God himself is far above. He deserves to be known that way. So here they are at the Areopagus and these religious people, hey, the, these men of Athens, most probably Greek, and here they are with all the objects and, and, and admitting they don't know God, but we're doing it this way. How many people have said to me from churches, oh, we worship Jesus our own way. No, no one, no one is permitted to worship Jesus their own way. Nobody. Nobody. Who said so? Me? No, the Bible. Let's go to the writings of John 4, please. John 4.
John 4 and the verse is 23. John 4, 23. Oh, we worship Jesus their own way. These are proud and arrogant, unteachable, headstrong. Writings of John. Brother uh, Shane, you can help brother there if, if that's okay. John chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father His way in spirit and truth. For Father is seeking such to worship Him, not with statues, not, not, not with, with objects, not your way or my way, but His way, spirit and truth. So, this way is the truth, the Bible, the truth, and His way is spirit and truth, spirit, Holy Ghost, leading you. And the Holy Ghost will never lead you, I can tell you now, to Christmas celebrations, to Easter celebrations, to enlarge upon birthdays and days and months, seasons and Sabbath. The Holy Ghost will not lead you that way. The Holy Ghost, God cuts, He he culls everything and brings it down to simplicity that every man and woman on earth can worship Him. His way. Spirit and truth. Not oh, we got a big building. It's like the, we got statues in there. We we got the best architecture, and we got this, we got that. Jesus was called the carpenter, and he never built one building. Why? Because what it says here. Because it says in verse twenty three of John four. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship Father in spirit of truth. For Father wants it this way. He's seeking them, seeking those to worship him that way. There's, as you know here, there's nothing fancy in this hall. We have the name of the church and we have scripture. That's it. Ain't nothing fancy. We're not worshipping the band. Ain't no band. We are the band. (laughs) We're a band of men and women following Jesus. Amen. Amen. I made a promise to follow Jesus. I made a promise. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The gates of pearl before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. I. So here he is in Athens, talking to these Greeks or whatever they are, the Athenians. First 30, Acts 17. Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. He said to them, they're ignorant. But the, the, the Athenians and the Greeks, they all thought they were so wise. But the Lord said he'll take the foolish, the abased and the weak to confound the wise. Now, we're in Acts 17, 30. Truly, these times of ignorance, God overlooked their ignorance. But now, commands all men everywhere to repent. Paul preached repentance. Repent. Now's the time to repent. Turn from that. See, we, we are here to correct. We are here to teach. We are here to encourage. We are, as the people of God, we're here to assure people of the goodness and the severity of God. 
of hell and heaven, of light and darkness, of Jesus and the devil. Thirty one, Acts seventeen. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. That's Jesus. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. That's Jesus. He's preaching Jesus. As Paul said, I warn and I teach. We preach Christ. I warn and I teach. Can we go to Colossians, please? Colossians. The writings of Colossians. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1 and the verse is 28. Him we preach, warning every man. Him we preach, Colossians 1 28. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect. In Christ Jesus. To this end I also labour, striving according to his working which works in me mightily. Worked in Paul like the Holy Ghost. Working mightily. Jesus, the word of God, working mightily. Preaching Jesus was was raised from the dead. That Jesus is going to judge everyone. He'll judge Muhammad. He will judge the Pope. He will judge me. He will judge you. He will judge everyone. For every man and woman stand at the judgment seat of Christ, give account of everything done in the body, whether that be good or whether that be evil. Knowing the fear of the Lord, I persuade men Daily to repent now. Hallelujah. And correct them if they think otherwise. Verse 32, Acts 17. And when they had heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked him, while others said, We will hear you again on this matter. So Paul departed from among them. Acts 17, 32. Come on now. Chimaras. Acts 17, 32. They, see, they started mocking. Others said, we'll, 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 they were Mr. In Between. He had the mockers, then Mr. In Between. We'll hear you again on this. And then, in Acts 17, 34... We have the others. There's three lots. However, some men joined Paul and believed. Among them, the Onsias, the Arapagite, and a woman named Damaris, 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 and others with them. Had the mockers. Then we had the, maybe could be, I don't know. And then we had the, Yes. Yay. Amen. We'll join you, Paul. Gotcha. Amen? Amen. Isn't that wonderful? So when you go out this week, don't expect everyone to be, oh, I'll join you. <laughs> don't expect everyone to say, oh, I'll be joining you. Now you're going to have the mockers. And then you're going to have the, oh, I might come one day. Yeah, uh, you know, oh, I might come to your tent one day, you know. Maybe it could be on a no. I'll hear you again on this matter. You know. And then you'll have the, I'll be there. You have the sunnies. Sunny, thank you for the time you've given me. Sunny, woo, thank you for the time to listen to me. The Christ is coming, the Lord is real. 
He's gonna judge. Oh, let's get real sunny. Oh, I love you. Took the time to come along and hear him. Say yes all the way. We've got to hold fast our confidence and our, our faith to the end. Got to go all the way to the end. No good going halfway, getting off the road and going for some sin holiday. Everybody's on a sin holiday. With Cliff Richard, you know. <laughs> no. Everybody's on a sin holiday. Ah, yes. Stay on the narrow road and you'll find your gifts. God has gifted you, every one of you. With gifts. You'll find them right in front of you as you stay on the narrow road. God has blessed all his people. If you stay on the narrow road, your blessings will be there. Wrapped up beautifully with a card. Love you, son. Jesus. Or love you, daughter. Jesus. If you stay on the narrow road. Never mind there's this, thou was, oh yes, oh, the Lord says you're going to be an apostle. Hang on, I'll just check. Yeah, there's a big checkbook in his back pocket. Oh yeah. Mm. The Lord says you're going to be, oh yeah, a prophet of prophets in the prophet realm. Oh yeah. Did you say you have three businesses? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Woombi Dumbi. Now stay on the narrow road and you'll find your gift. Add gifts, your talents. Stay on the narrow road and your gifts and talents and call will just manifest. Otherwise, the glory belongs to someone else. But the glory belongs to Jesus. He's, he's the one that's called you to do whatever and he'll meet the call and he'll make it known to you. You know what? When I came to the Lord, nobody said anything good about me. Nobody. Because I believe they knew I was well doused in the Holy Ghost. And they were jealous of Joseph in his coat of many colours. And they thought, oh, we better not say anything to this bloke. He might steal our thunder. He might outshine us. He'll steal the spotlight. So I had nothing between them and us and me, I should say. I had to wait on the Lord. I had to let the Lord lead. I had to let the Lord show me. And that's what he showed me. And I'm teaching you today. Stay on the narrow road in the truth. Do it. And you'll find your gifts. You'll find your blessings. You'll never be without any good thing. He will... Open your eyes. He will reveal to you. No Bible college. You don't have to go to Bible college. They'll only confuse you and dry you out. Forget Bible college. Jesus didn't say in the writings of John 16, I'm going home to Father and I will send to Bible college. He didn't say, I'm going home to Father and I will send... Uh, a Greek or a Hebrew, a Jew or an Arabic teacher. He said, no, I'm going home to Father. I will send another. He is the paraclete. He is the Holy Ghost. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen. 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 He who has an ear, let him hear. You don't need two. You only need one. You only need one ear. You don't need to be a millionaire. You don't need to be tall. You don't need to be black, white, yellow, green. You don't need to be uh, Superman or Green Lantern. You don't need to be <laughs> uh, educated. You don't need to be from a great family or a really religious family. No, you just need one ear. One ear. At the end of the day, 
to be saved from the fires of hell. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And the Spirit of God spoke here today through this clay pot, through this earthen vessel. Listen. Listen. Do you want to know a secret? Do you promise you'll go and tell everyone closer? Listen, he who has an ear, because these who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. He never said those who were born again. He never said those who were water baptised. He said those who were led by the Spirit of God. Look at it in your Bible, please. Romans 8.14. Romans 8.14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Glory to the Lamb. Romans 8, 14. Listen, do you want to know a secret? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons. Romans 8.14 Hallelujah Romans 8.14 Led by the Spirit You see there's no In that there's nothing No glory for you Because it's not you. Oh, I'm so clever. I worked it out in my head how to get to heaven. No glory for you. The glory belongs to Jesus. It's his spirit. It's his word. It's his crucifixion. It's his burial. It's his resurrection. It's his love. It's his grace power. It's his Faith, substance of faith that he gave you, saved by grace through faith. His grace, his faith, his word, his love, his joy, his peace, his power, his, his, everything's his. The glory belongs to Jesus. And those who are led by his spirit. These are the sons of God. So no one can say, oh, you know You're working your way to heaven. You got salvation by works. No, no, sorry, friend. That doesn't. That that doesn't add up. That's dumb and dumber. That's dumb and dumber. That's that once saved, always saved. Baptist garbage talk. Hogwash. You know. Everyone sins. No, they don't. No, they don't. All have sinned. Oh, yeah. Have. Past that. But now, what does it say? Don't take a man's word. Let's go to the scriptures. 2 Timothy 2.19. 2 Timothy 2.19. What does it say? It says... Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. 2 Timothy 2.19 Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from sin. 2 Timothy 2.19 Does it say depart from sin? Oh, it doesn't matter if you sin. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. 2 Timothy 2.19, brother. It does matter. You must depart. Anyone who names the name of Christ. That's how precious the name of Christ is. But every Freddy and his dog think they got the right to use the name of Jesus. I tell you what, they're using the name of the Lord in vain. Depart. So, 
Who, who was Paul talking to? Talking to Timothy and the church. Our message today, correct them. See, correct them. If you love your mother and your brother, your sister, you love your so-called mates, tell them they're on the road to hell. They're on the highway to hell. <laughs> they're on the highway to hell. That's where I was on my Harley Davidson on the highway to hell. No shirt, no shoes, just a bag of grass in the back pocket, no helmet. Plenty of dough in the front pocket. Just hundred dollar bills hanging out. I'm on the highway to hell. You know what I mean? And I was. It was real. Because <laughs> only God knew that I'd sing that song every time I'd ride my bike drunk and drugged. And the Aboriginal come to me and said, Hey brother, you're on your way to hell. And it had a flashback. I'm on the highway to hell. Get it? See how God shows you clearly. I was five year old. I heard God's voice. I didn't know who it was. But when the Aboriginal spoke to me, I said, I know that voice. Where did I hear that voice? And it took me back to when I was five year old under the tree in the backyard. Because the scriptures say, I know my sheep and my sheep know my voice. Everyone said. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay.